Hello everyone, I'm uh, Sam Leathers, I'm with IOHK, and um, I'm going to be talking about Haskell.nics today. Uh, sadly, my uh, colleague uh, Moritz Engerman uh, that wrote this uh, was not able to attend, so uh, I'm uh, doing this presentation for him. So to get started here, uh-oh, okay, good. Um, Haskell.nics is an alternative infrastructure to build Haskell packages with Nics. Nix PKGs does have a Haskell infrastructure already in place that is used for all Haskell packages provided by Nix PKGs. This talk will address the why and how Haskell.nix came to be. Um, so the Haskell package infrastructure. Haskell uses a tool called Cabal for package management. Packages are annotated with Cabal files which provide Cabal with sufficient information to discover and solve for dependencies and instruct it how to build the package. Haskell packages have to provide a library and can provide multiple named executables and named test suites. These are called components. A package can therefore have multiple components, but must at least have one. Recently, sublibraries and the ability to add named libraries have been added to Cabal. We will ignore named libraries for now. Packages can be built using either a command line tool called Cabal install or a lower level plumbing approach using the Cabal library that comes with the Haskell compiler called setup.hs. To build a package with Cabal, usually it is enough to call Cabal new build. Cabal will solve and download the dependencies. To figure out the dependencies, it relies on some form index of the current globally known package universe. This index is provided by a web service called Hackage, which is the central Hackage, Haskell package repository. Using Cabal new update will update the local index with the one from Hackage. With the Hackage index, Cabal will then solve against a given compiler version for a package set to use as dependencies and subsequently build the package. So the setup HS approach, um, the Glasgow Haskell compiler, this is also known as GHC, is the predominant Haskell compiler used in production and ships with the Cabal library. This is important as it allows a package to be built without the Cabal command line tool, but with just a simple Haskell module compiled against the Cabal library. This is usually called setup.hs and provided alongside the Cabal file. If not, it can be trivially created. Compiling and running this module will produce a very simple interface to build the Cabal package. It will not take care of downloading the packages. These will have to be provided by the end user. It will, however, ensure that a valid dependency solution can be computed for the package to be built given the provided packages. And uh, up there you can see a, um, uh, a sample setup.hs file. Um, so the life cycle of a package built with Nix PKGs default builders. So first we're going to talk a little bit about how things are done with Nix PKGs and Haskell with Nix PKGs and then we're going to get more into the nitty gritty of how Haskell.nix is doing things and show some examples here. Um, so packages built within Nix PKGs usually follow the following steps. You download the source code, apply any relevant patches, uh, configure uh, if necessary, you build the package, and then you uh, run the test suites if they're available. So uh, the existing Haskell infrastructure in Nix PKGs follows this life cycle pretty well. It builds all dependencies and uses the setup HS approach to build the package against its dependencies, and then runs the test suites via setup HS as well. Then it marks the package as successfully built. To achieve this, it uses a tool called Cabal to Nix, which takes a Cabal file, the description of the package and its dependencies, and translates it into Nix. Then Nix can read the description and decide which dependencies are needed and depend on them and provide them to set up HS when building. We try to sidestep dependency resolution here by providing a curated package set with Nix PKGs. Hence, any package that is being built with Nix PKGs will need to be built against this curated package set. For some packages, the curated package set may contain multiple versions to satisfy, satisfy otherwise unsatisfiable constraints. So some benefits of the existing Haskell infrastructure in Nix PKGs. 
Um, by using a curated package set and the GHC compilers available in NixPKGs, the complexity of package and compiler matrix and operating system is very manageable. To provide NixOS and NixPKGs users with pre-built Haskell packages for tools like Pandoc, Git Annex, Hackle, this works really well. Using only Cabal to Nix and a curated package set leads the builder to be relatively straightforward and involves little complex complexity in Nix. By being part of NixPKGs, it's tested on a daily basis by Hydra whenever anything touches the Haskell infrastructure. Be it compilers, packages, changes, the curated package set, it is also the infrastructure that's available to anyone using NixPKGs right out of the gate. Um, there are some drawbacks though of the existing Haskell infrastructure. Um, whether or not it makes sense to have multiple package sets in NixPKGs is debatable. For the purpose of providing Haskell packages with NixPKGs, a curated package set makes sense though. It's tied to NixPKGs selection of compilers. Any other version would need to be added through an overlay. Also, the compiler expressions in NixPKGs may change in unexpected ways when updating NixPKGs. The Cabal to Nix tool will flatten the conditionals that Cabal files can have, like the operating system, architecture, GHC, other flags, at build time. Hence, if the Cabal file was converted on a Linux machine, it will almost always miss the Windows branches or might miss Mac OS branches. Hence, overriding of expressions is needed to patch back in existing library dependencies. This makes cross-compiling Haskell packages rather complicated. Cabal to Nix resolves system library dependencies of Haskell packages to their respective Nix PKG sets within the Cabal to Nix tool. This requires rebuilding the Cabal to Nix tool every time changes to this mapping are necessary. The existing infrastructure is package level based. We, since the existing infrastructure is package level based, we sequence building and testing of libraries. It leads to mutual package cycles where the test suite of one package depends on the library of a third package, which again depends on the library of the package that's being tested. Thus, often, don't check is required because like anytime you're putting things together that get in the way of other things and whatnot, sometimes you have to put don't check in because the one thing breaks the other thing or this thing breaks another thing. Um, so, so let's talk about why we need another Haskell infrastructure here. Um, at IOHK, we wanted to reduce our burden of having to deal with AppVair and Windows CI pipelines. How many of you guys like dealing with Windows CI pipelines? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah, so we were doing this and we were using um, uh, stack basically in uh, build scripts that were running on Windows on AppVair and AppVair builds would time out because the stack stuff would uh, take too long. We had a tool um, that basically was caching the stack builds to S3 and it, it was a little bit of a mess. So you can see where we're coming from here. Um, everything we do in CI is Nix based and our build machines, both Linux and Mac OS are all Nix capable, but Windows isn't. So we wanted to make cross compilation initially work with the existing Haskell infrastructure in Nix PKGs. Only after we had issues with the uh, aforementioned drawbacks of the existing infrastructure, too often did we try to solve the issue, but couldn't without fundamentally changing how Haskell packages are built. We have a lot of Haskell software with a large set of package dependencies. Teams are free to use Cabal or Stack in our team. So we got some developers that really like Cabal, we have some that really like Stack, and believe it or not, we actually have a few that really like doing everything with Nix as well. So I mean, we have a huge variety of the way people want to build their code. Um, so thus we need to be able to build Cabal and stack projects in CI. And stack projects across multiple LTSs as different teams may be using different LTSs. So uh, LTS is the long-term uh, releases that uh, are in Hackage and whatnot. So uh, for those of you that aren't familiar with um, Hackage and how that works. Um, to solve the stack LTS issue, we initially developed a tool called Stack to Nix, which uses Cabal to Nix to turn a stackage snapshot into a package set with Nix PKGs, um, but it still retained the existing Nix PKGs Haskell builder. This didn't provide to be enough to get cross-compiling working smoothing, smoothly, and we also kept running into excessive CI turnaround times. Like, we'd have some builds that were taking well, like I mentioned before, AppVair builds timing out. Well, our timeout on AppVair was two hours. So when you have a build that's running two hours, 
and timing out, that's a little bit of a pain for developers. So we really wanted to solve this problem. Um, so the Haskell Nix infrastructure. So this is this was really born out of ne necessity. Um, if we could have done this without having to write our own thing, we definitely would have. But it just there were too many things we had to work around. So this is what came out of it. Um, and like I mentioned before, uh, Moritz Engerman, um, we hired him. Um, he spent about three months trying to make all this stuff work without building something. And then he gave us a proposal basically saying, this is what it needs to look like for me to get this to work. And uh, he implemented it. Um, we have been using this, although not the latest version with the really cool overlays I'm going to show you um, soon. Um, we have absolutely been using this since December. And we've been cross-compiling our Windows Haskell builds since March. And it works really well. We haven't had any complaints about the results that we get from the Windows builds. There haven't been any bugs that have arisen that are only in the NICs and not happening on native Windows. So, I mean, we're rather happy with it. Um, so, Haskell.nix builds packages at the component level. Thus, if we only need the library of a package, we will only build that one library. And yes, this means we don't necessarily test the library we have built automatically. There are some benefits and some downsides to doing that, but that's a decision that we've made. It, it helps with our CI times a lot. We still run tests. It's just you can, if you build the thing locally yourself and just get the EXE, you're not going to know if the test passed unless you run the test too. Um, so um, by building components, we don't have issues with dependency cycles as components cannot depend mutually on each other. However, Cabal to Nix does not provide Nix with sufficient information to, uh, for components. Hence, we wrote a tool called Cabal to Nix and a tool that translates stackage descriptions, uh, uh, aptly called stackage to Nix, and one that translates all of hackage into Nix, hackage to Nix, as well as a tool to convert stack.yaml project descriptions into Nix, um, uh, called stack to Nix, and one to convert configured Cabal projects, plan to Nix, and all these tools are part of a suite called Nix Tools and are essential to make Haskell.Nix work. The Haskell Nix infrastructure is a lot more complex than the existing Haskell infrastructure. Um, so some benefits of using Haskell.Nix. It does not rely on a curated package set. Um, Haskell.Nix can build almost any package for which either a stackage set or a plan.json cabal project can be computed. It has component level granularity, does not need don't check to break dependency cycles, and it's faster if given enough concurrency by having component level granularity. Only components are built and dependency can start building once the library components have been built. Also, it doesn't build unnecessary executables if they aren't used um, and retains full conditionals from co uh, Cabal packages and allows us to configure the OS architecture and flags when the package is instantiated in Nix. It does not hard code library mappings. Uh, system libraries uh, are mapped to Nix PKGs through a simple attribute set name. Uh, so same for things like licenses, and comes with its own set of compilers and has a much wider range of compilers than those provided by Nix PKGs. It relies on Nix PKGs only for the system packages. So this is a key point here. This is kind of deviating from using the Haskell infrastructure and in Nix here. The only thing we're using Nix for are the system libraries, and then we provide everything that we need for building Haskell within Haskell.Nix. Um, and cross-compilation was one of our primary motivations for um, Haskell.Nix, and uh, this really makes cross-compilation very trivial, as you'll see below. So some drawbacks of Haskell.Nix. Um, it does not have much caching um, by n because it's not relying on a curated package set. Um, caching of artifacts is much harder. Uh, changes to flags will also invalidate whole dependency trees. And it is uh, much more complex and requires Nix to do a lot more work and can mean that evaluations take a bit longer. It has component level granularity and produces many more deviations in the existing infrastructure. Um, so let's take a little sidestep here. There's another project. How many of you are familiar with Snack? OK, so a little bit about Snack here. Um, so you can kind of look at Nix PKGs um, is kind of at the package level. Haskell.nix is at the component level, and Snack is really at the module level. Um, 
Uh, so Haskell.nix is kind of somewhere in between the existing Haskell and uh, infrastructure and how Snack does things. Uh, and certainly we'll definitely uh, look into uh, what Snack is providing with us uh, in the future. We did try using Snack. Um, Michael Bishop also at this conference here known as uh, Clever on IRC, him and I uh, were tackling trying to get uh, one of our projects building with uh, Snack. And uh, he can tell you the gory details of that, but it came down to after fixing it to get it to build in less than three days, I think we only got it down to about 18 hours. Um, <laughs> but he can tell you the gory details about that. Um, so a uh, simple Haskell.nix example here. Uh, so uh, essentially, we need a package set. So we have NixPKGs. NixPKGs is defined down here. We use fetch tarball here to get the uh, pin of NixPKGs we want. And then we put this all in an overlay. Um, and we're grabbing the Haskell Nix tarball here with a SHA. And then we set our Haskell compiler to GHC865. And then after we do that, and this can really be simplified using, um, we're using NIV right now. I'm sure Flakes would also make this simplified a whole lot more for passing around the Nix PKG stuff. Um, but after you do that, it's literally packages, Haskell Nix, and then a Cabal project. Give it a path to uh, where your source is. We do have this really cool uh, clean Git stuff here. Um, clean git excludes any files that are not in the git index if there is one um, to prevent unnecessary builds. Um, uh, Haskell.nix also cleans the source on a per component basis. So modifying the source of a test, for example, will not result in the library of the, pack of, uh, the, library of the package that uh, needing to be rebuilt. Um, and then we're defining a custom GHC here because we want to use GHC865 for this project. Um, we also, I didn't put an example in here, but we also have a similar uh, uh, way to do this with basically just replacing Cabal project with uh, Stack project, and then it will use stack.yaml instead of the Cabal project stuff. Um, so you have flexibility in that, that you can build using the Stack side or you can build using the Cabal side. Um, so when we build the package, so you do a nix build here. Uh, it's in a um, attribute here. So hello dot components dot exes dot hello, and then um, this is backticks. I probably would have done dollar parens here, but I didn't write this example. Um, and then slash bin hello basically to call it. And then you see some traces here that's using the latest index state. It's using a git source, and then it's saying that it's not a git repository, so it's probably a clean checkout, so I'm just going to ignore doing any clean source, um, uh, using latest index state a few times, and then it prints out hello world. Um, so that's essentially what it looks like. Um, the same default nix here can be used to build GTK2HS, um, which I don't know how many, how many of you have built GTK2HS, anybody? Was it fun? <laughs> um, so that's, that's pretty powerful that this single thing here is so powerful that it can build a simple hello project and it can also do GTK2HS using the same exact thing, basically just saying instead of hello, I want to point the source at GTK2HS. Um, the Cabal project file specifies the hackage index state, so that same plan will be chosen every time here. Um, uh, here's an example of a, a Cabal project. Uh, GTK2HS is an example of a package that is very difficult to build, and it both depends on native libraries and makes use of custom setup scripts. Um, and like I mentioned before, the same default nix can be used to build GTK2HS. Um, and then the Cobol project file specifies the hackage index state, so the same plan will be chosen every time. Right there, you see that right there. And um, Haskell.nix will just respect that, and you're good. Um, so uh, how many of you use um, a Nix shell for working with your Haskell projects? Yeah, lots of people. Um, as well as providing a way to build Haskell packages with Nix, Haskell.nix also provides a um, shell in which you can use Cabal New Build to work on all your packages. It automatically determines what Haskell packages should be available in the shell. 
And in the case of GTK2HS, it will include all dependencies of Cairo, Geo, Glib, etc., but will not include uh, those packages themselves. It includes both the Haskell dependencies and the native dependencies. So right here we have Haskell compiler GHC865 again. We're importing that same default Nix I showed earlier, and we're inheriting the Haskell compiler, and then shells uh, GHC, and then we're calling Nix shell, and you see trace shell for Cairo glib, it detects all the dependencies, and then you're in a Nix shell where you can build GTK2HS. Um, so, working in the next shell, when you run cabal new build or cabal new repl inside the shell, it only needs to build the packages that are already included in the project itself. So, requested index state, package falling back to older state, resolving dependencies, in order the following will be built. There's a list of all your build tools, and that's pretty much it with it. And then we can cross-compile. This is the huge reason we started doing this in the first place. And let me show you how different cross-compiling is. So if you look here, we got the packages, we have the overlays, all that's the same. Oh wait, here's something different, config. Cross system equals pkgs lib systems examples mingw64. And you can ignore the rest of the file because that's the same default.nix. <laughs> so now you have Windows binaries built on Nix that you can ship to Windows users, all right here. And that's pretty much my talk. I will take some questions, but if you have anything like really technical or in-depth, you really need to contact Angerman or Hamishmack on IRC because, again, I did not write this. I'm just doing the talk for them. Um, let me actually see... D -d -d -d. Nope, it's still compiling. I was gonna do a live demo of it, but like I mentioned how it basically brings all its dependencies with it. Well, the next build was building Git and GHC and a number of other things that were needed to get the thing working with the pin I had. So I don't have a live demo for you, sorry. Any questions? In the back. Hey there, uh, thanks for creating Haskell Nix, I really love it. And I would like to move all my projects where I used uh, stack to Nix to create all the stackage stuff and like produce giant commits with uh, package links, uh, lists. I would like to use Haskell Nix for all the projects now. And uh, I've seen that if I want to have the same workflow like before, so it compiles, builds all the tests too, and only if the tests are successful, I get a, a working um, result. Um, with Haskell Nix, it doesn't seem to be like this. I have this components subset, and there it has access and libraries and tests. And it seems like I have to tinker this workflow so that it builds everything and then tests it and then creates the package, if the tests work at all, that I have to tinker that myself. Or is there some easy one-liner way that is already included that I didn't see yet? So I don't have an easy one-liner way because I mean, we're building tons of packages and whatnot across. Most people aren't really running tests locally unless they're working on a specific test. And we're just running everything in CI. Um, but we have some awesome wrappers that you can check in the input output HK slash IOHK Nix repo um, that helps generate a release Nix file um, that you can just give it a projects, give it a list of all the projects that you're using with Haskell Nix and it will generate um, all the jobs needed in the job set. And then you can also automate uh, creating a required uh, job set that has constituents based on the things that you want to pass. So we basically just offload that to CI and that's why it wasn't a requirement for building the binaries to be able to pass the tests. That sounds like a nice pointer, thank you. You say you don't have to, don't check true. How do you get around the uh, dependency problem with the, the tests? Do you have a different derivation just for the test that, get built, that gets built at the end? Yes, that's essentially how it works. You have a different component for every test and everything basically gets its own attribute in the um, default.nix and then again, we just basically have a release.nix that says 
we want to include all tests in our required attribute set. Um, quick question on what you uh, judge the overall status of the project is. You say you're already using it successfully at IOHK. Uh, do you know, for example, whether it can build all the packages that are commonly built by the standard Haskell Nix infrastructure, Nix packages, can it build, let's say, the, the, the full entirety of uh, stackage snapshots? And do you foresee or do you plan to eventually or put forward a proposal to replace the generic Haskell builder by Haskell.nix in Nix packages after more testing, for example? That would be a question you would really have to ask uh, Angerman on IRC. Um, but I, I don't know if it necessarily fills the same requirements that you'd be looking for in Nix PKGs for a package set um, because of some of the des design decisions that were made with it. But that would definitely be a question that you could talk to Angerman on IRC, and I'm sure he'd be happy to answer it for you. Yeah. Um, I ran into problems recently or some time ago with uh, the... the the usual Haskell uh, PKG's infrastructure that it does not uh, really uh, respect uh, the version numbers. Does Haskell.nix uh, respect version numbers or version constraints? Yes, version numbers and also you can, um, uh, we're, we're currently using the stack side rather than the cabal side, but you can do it with cabal freeze files as well. Um, it will respect the versions and um, custom Git repository revs and everything across the project, so it's consistent. Thanks. Uh, one more. Do you, plan to do you plan to push it to upstream? Do I plan to what? Push it to upstream. I'm not sure if it could really go in Nix PKGs. I think it's a little too hairy for Nix PKGs right now. Maybe, I mean, this would be a question for Angerman as well, whether it can go into Nix PKGs. Um, but right now I see it more as um, like something. And maybe, I, I, I don't, I, I think some work would need to be done for it to go into upstream. I think more likely if it went into upstream, it would probably be a flake. Cheers. Okay, thank you.